This video will take a look to see how characters are represented in computer systems. So as we've already seen, the CPU is made up of lots of switches, and these switches can be in one of two states. They can be on or off. So computers can only really represent two digits, zeros and ones. They can only deal with those two um, digits. So therefore, we have the binary number system. Now, all data that the computer needs to work with, whether it's numbers, whether it's sound, whether it's images, all of that data has to be converted into binary numbers for the computer to be able to process it. And it's exactly the same for text. And one piece of text is known as a character. So each time you hit a key on a keyboard, the computer will generate a code for that letter, a unique code for that letter, which is then processed by the CPU. And the result might be the letter appearing on the screen or being printed to paper. And so that all computer systems behave in the same way, it's really important that there's an agreed set of codes for each of the characters. And in 1960, the American Standard Association agreed on a set of codes to represent the main characters in the English language, and that's known as ASCII, the American Standard Code for Information Interchange. So the ASCII character set. The English language requires lots of different codes so that every letter and symbol can be represented. So there's 26 lowercase letters that have to be represented by their own binary number. The same for all the uppercase letters. You've got the numeric symbols as well. You've got all the punctuation symbols. And we've also got some non-printable control codes as well. But ultimately there's 127 different uh, letters or characters that need to be represented by binary numbers. So as we know, one byte is capable of storing 256 different numbers. The ASCII uh, character set system requires just 127 different codes. So in binary, okay, the ASCII system uses just seven bits. And as 8-bit machines became standard, the ASCII character set made use of that extra bit, providing a further 128 characters. And that new character set, using the 8 bits, is known as the extended ASCII character set. So conventionally, a byte is used to represent all characters for the English language. And here is an example of the ASCII table, ASCII character set, all of the characters and the values that are used to represent those characters. Now, there is a problem with ASCII. It's absolutely fine for the English language. It can hold up to 256 characters, and really we only need 127. So the extras in the extended ASCII character set are actually um, bonus characters. But the problem is that some languages, such as Mandarin, use hundreds of different characters which can't fit into one byte. And so Unicode is another character set which is used to represent lots of other characters. So computers, as they developed, 16-bit computers were introduced and new character sets were developed to accommodate the various other languages of the world. And this character set, as we've already just heard, is called Unicode. So Unicode uses 32 bits, so two sets of 16 bits to represent every character in various languages around the world. Now within the Unicode system, the original 127 ASCII characters still have the same code values. So the same binary numbers representing them, but others have just been added on. 